It turns out you can write both cosine and sine as a sum of Bessel functions of different orders. And in order to show that that's true, you can evaluate the generating function in some sort of mysterious suitable point. So pause the video and see if you can identify that suitable point and then also take the next steps. Our generating function looks as follows. So we have exponential x over 2 t minus 1 over t. And then we need to show something about sines and cosines. So here we have an exponential. We have sines and cosines. What's the relationship between sines and cosines and exponentials? Well, obviously our friend Euler tells us that exponential jx is equal to cosine of x plus j sine of x. So looking at these two expressions over here, it's uh, quite logical that if you make a certain choice for t, um, that you can hope to sort of like turn this expression into that expression and therefore into cosine x plus j sine of x. So let's see what happens if we demand that these two things become equal. So they become equal if x over 2 t minus 1 over t is equal to jx. So after getting rid of the x, we can write this as t minus 1 over t is equal to 2j. And that becomes t squared minus 1 is equal to 2jt. So t squared minus 2jt minus 1 equal to 0. And that finally gives us t minus j squared is equal to 0. Indeed, the double product gives us minus j2t, and then minus j squared gives us minus 1. So, if we substitute j for t in our generating function, we get something that's very promising to help us prove this uh, theorem. In case this was the hint that was missing, pause the video and take the next steps for yourself. So what do we have now? We have that exponential jx, also known as cosine x plus j sine of x, that we get that expression by having our generating function and then substituting j for t. We also know that we can write that generating function as a sum of Bessel functions of different order. So a sum going from minus infinity to plus infinity of j and x, and then t to the power of n, that's going to be j to the power of n. Now, in order to help us see what's going on and to identify the different patterns, let's just write down a whole lot of terms and see if we can figure out what's, uh, what's going on here. So let's make a small table where this is n, and then we calculate j to the power of n, and then also j sub n different uh, j of course for different values and uh, let's start with n equal to zero then we get j to the power of zero that's one and then j zero so for n equal to one we get j and j one for n equal to two we get j squared that's minus one j two for n equal to three we get n multiplying by j is minus j j3 and then for 4 uh, we finally have 1 back and then j4 so you see when it comes to powers of j these patterns repeat themselves so we have the pattern 1 j minus 1 minus j repeating itself this pattern will also repeat itself for negative powers of j obviously so if we now look at what happens for minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and then minus 4 we have this repeating pattern, 1, j, minus 1, minus j. And then for the Bessel functions, we have j minus 4. But remember that we have this formula here, where we have a j of a negative order is equal to a j of a positive order, but multiplied by minus 1 to the power of that order. 
Now in this case, we have the order being equal to four. So minus one to four, that's um, giving us just one. So j minus four is actually equal to j four. It's different for j minus three, which will give us minus j three. But then here we have j minus two giving us j two, j minus one giving us minus j one. So here we have all of these terms um, and now we can really see what's going on because we see that half of these terms are uh, purely real and the other half are purely imaginary. So let's have a look at the terms which are purely real first and that will give us the contribution to cosine of x. So for cosine of x let's have a look at a purely real term. So there's one over here for j0. So it's basically going to be all of the even uh, terms here, the even orders. So we have minus j2 over here. And then uh, we have the same thing exactly over here because we have also a minus sign and then j2. So we have minus 2j2. And then for, j, uh, for, for the, the next term, it's going to be a term for uh, n equal to 4. So that's going to be plus j4 here again and then also over there it's another plus j4 so you have 2j4 and then you see the pattern minus j6 and so on so finally we can write this a little bit more compact as the following summation a summation over only um, even orders of the Bessel function so j2n of x here and then in terms of sine, we have minus 1 to the power of n. Let's see if this is right. Let's substitute n equal to 1 in here. So for j2, we should expect a minus sign. And indeed, minus 1 to the power of 1 gives us that, uh, that minus sign. So that's good news. We have the cosine taken care of. Let's now focus on the sine by having a look at all of the imaginary terms. So for sine of x, well, it's obviously going to be all of the odd orders of the Bessel function. So let's have a look at uh, here, over here, we have uh, j1. And then over there, we have minus and minus. So again, that's, that's going to be plus j1. So we have two times j1. And then for j3, we have a minus sign over here. And then another minus sign over there. So we have minus 2j3, and then the pattern repeats, 2j5, okay. And also here we can write this a little bit more uh, compact as uh, two times a summation over all odd powers. So let's have an n going from 0 to infinity, and then j 2n plus 1x. So the first term that we have for n equal to 0 is indeed uh, 1. And then for sine, we have minus 1 to the power of n. Uh, okay, so if we put n equal to 0 here, we have minus 1 to the power of 0. That's 1, and indeed our first term should have a positive sign. So this is how we show that uh, these equations are true.